Well, here I am in the gallery, and what I'm doing is building some of the things that will be populating my um, large cylindrical background. So, to refresh your memory, there is the cylinder. And over there in the distance, way in the distance, you see little trucks and bigger trucks. And the biggest trucks will be in the foreground, which will be represented at the bottom of the um, cylinder, since that represents the things that are closer to us. So I'm just building right now. I went to my desk and I came across little, little itty bitty scraps of cardboard that I thought I would use to make some more little tiny cranes and stuff that are going to be seen in the distance. I'm not going to have that many maybe a half a dozen or so. So they're not going to have much detail. They're essentially going to have a shape. So this could be the all of what would, would be a uh, steam shovel, maybe. Problem is when they get to be so tiny, there's really not much holding the yellow layer to the bottom layers. So you have to sort of be careful that, or be aware that they could easily break off and fall and whatever. So here's the steam shovel. Of course, it needs to have some treads. The treads are usually made with circular objects or in this case, in this case I'm just going to use one of these. I've got a lot of this. So why am I doing this? I keep cutting it too small. this with something else. Oops! Put it on upside down or sideways. There. Does that look like a tractor? Usually they have another one coming off the side, so I guess I need another one coming off the side. Um, I'll use that to represent the Usually there's a shovel here and a plow or a backhoe, backhoe digger on the other side. There, does that look enough like what I'm doing? Yesterday I went out to the end of the street and I was drawing actual scenery. Now I was using my um, dried up markers so the detail and the way that I was drawing was kind of clumsy which is exactly what I wanted. I could have used a fountain pen with a fine nib and managed to get all sorts of detail but I didn't want that. I wanted to have, I wanted these to be clumsy and for example, this thing, you won't be able to tell because you weren't there and this isn't drawn very well, but this was a chain link gate that was open. Big sign, yellow or orange, um, stripey things saying road closed and big orange sign here. But I love the patterning 
So there was the orange stripes, the silver mesh of the chain link fence, the stairway with its railings, striped railings going up, bars on the window over here. But what really I liked about this was the shadows of the steps that were coming down on that wall. And though I can't really show that on something like this that I'm working on, I may go back and draw that better at some point. Here, they're, they're building a bridge back here, and there were like all sorts of orange and white signs and cones and detour and road closed and all sorts of stuff there. Um, orange is quite the color, the color in question here. Then I also started doing little solitary porta potty drawings. I learned that porta potties come in pairs these days. I don't know exactly if they have his and hers porta potties for the his and her construction workers, or if they're unisex porta potties, or what. Normally I see them in pairs. This was all by itself. And uh, here's that chain link fence I just talked to you about. And um, looking, turning around. Yes. This is up. Turning around 180 degrees from this vantage point, I see the other part of the gate. There was a pallet here in shadow. Part of it was in shadow. There was a um, chain link fence. There was a window on a building here that was, you know, a, divided in four panes. And it was just the pattern on pattern on pattern that I sort of liked about that scene. This is essentially in between the two. This is, here's the panoramic view of what I was seeing. And um, here are those, the roadblock signs again with their shadows coming back. There's a car there and a car here. And these were all you know, striped this way, striped that way, and then these big shadows going that way, which also were striped because they were, because they were. Here's underneath the bridge was this really great uh, steam shovel thing that treads here and it was stretched out. It reminded me of uh, like an anteater or something with a big long neck, or flamingo with a big long neck, I guess. Anteaters have long noses, not long necks. Here's a backhoe, two porta potties. Um, here was this bridge again from a slightly different angle, and you see uh, the front of the construction thing here. And there's the, there's this one here again. But in this, this sort of light green bridge in shadow and a yellow thing and another yellow thing and big stone things there. Looking behind the building, upside down pier. I wonder I couldn't get my bearings. Looking behind the building that I showed you earlier, this one. In this, here's the building. Here's the chain link fence behind it. Looking behind the building and the chain link fence, you saw this vista, which had the shadow here and the pallet there that I just showed you and the Beyond here is the light, but it's all looking through these great uh, patterning of chain link fences. Now I can't really show 
chain linkage in my diorama that I'm working on now, but I, I'll save this for some other project. Chain link is among the ugliest things that was ever made by man. Um, it's depressing, it's dehumanizing, it shows, you know, that you belong on your side of the chain link, I belong on the other. And it's, it's ugly, there's really no way about it. Is there, how can I find beauty in it? Um, you know, I find beauty in these construction tool, uh, things, which are not built for beauty. This is not a, a Bugatti Roadster with leather interiors and uh, sterling silver cigarette lighters. These are ugly yellow machines that I find beautiful. So there has to be a way, and there is a way, that I'm finding chain link beautiful. I just haven't found the right way for me to convey the beauty to you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. I think most of you would feel that chain link is ugly. But what chain link does, it's transparent. You can see through it. It makes a grid. It makes a grid of a different color on its shadowing. Uh, when the light is reflected off of shiny chain link, it sort of sparkles in the same way that frost on tree branches sparkle. So if I'm able to convey that, beauty, I guess, or that sensation, um, maybe you and you and you would find that beautiful. The next time you walk past a chain link environment and bright orange traffic cones and yellow caution tape, maybe you'll see it differently after looking at artwork that an artist has done depicting those things. <clears throat> Normally, we artists are, we make things that most people think could be considered beautiful. Whether, the, whether they are or not is another story. Whether we succeed in conveying what we want to convey is not always evident, or we're not always successful in what we hope to do, but most of us try to make something look harmonious, if not beautiful. We try to make it visually interesting and um, and sometimes we try to make it look beautiful or more beautiful than it really is. And um, I'm certainly trying to make chain link fence look more beautiful than it is because it's pretty damn ugly to begin with. But by, um, I'm, not hide, I'm not making it look prettier. What I'm doing is trying to show the order that I see in something that's was not this was not designed by a landscape architect or even an architect <laughs> yes an architect had to draw a plan so that the people could put a fence in and they had to get approved by someone but nowhere in any imagination i don't think any of the people that were building these things thought they were making something look pretty or beautiful. Now, there might be architects out there that would take a 
different opinion about that. Maybe, maybe the prefab house that's there um, had some sort of design that I don't see. Maybe the proportion of the height to the width, the, you know, like think of a Quonset hut with its cylindrical roof, barrel vaulted roof. There might be beauty to that, I guess, somehow, somewhere. It's not obvious to me, but it might be obvious to the, the uh, designer who chose this span versus that depth. Um, but more likely than that, they said, this is as big as we can make it cheaply. Now I just added that, and I don't think that was helpful, so I'm going to remove that. I will put that, save that for something else. I think this one is done the way it is. Let's make another one. Anyway, I, you know, I, I've been talking to you people for a long time about this project and other things I do, and I don't want to, my three-quarter roommate was looking at one of my things that I had, a, a, a person that I really enjoy watching, and he, he, his, his feeling was that people like him just like to hear the sound of their own voice. And yes, uh, that is a problem with anyone that's posting these things, that you might think that. And I don't particularly like the sound of my voice, nor do I particularly think that what I have to say is more wise than someone else, but um, I'm doing it anyway. And I think some people like it. I don't expect to have more than a couple dozen people follow me ever, but I like the idea that I can share some of my reasons for doing what I do and um, maybe it will help someone understand what I do or inspire someone else to do something differently. So I think that's why I do it. I'm kind of an exhibitionist in that way. I hear someone whistling in the background. It's nice to hear, but I wonder who it is. Maybe I'll put that thing here. Maybe that can go here. That can represent the little cab. There. Fits better there. Maybe. I need one more thing. I need a little horizontal line. This is going to work, but we'll find out. I had talked about something else in the earlier video, and then someone started Skyping me without telling me they were going to Skype, and I ended up um, losing what I had just done, or it stopped in the middle. So I think I'm going to add this over here. No. I like that whistling, though. I don't know who's doing it. Um, what, I, what I was talking about was, you know, how can we, if we're social creatures, and this building is very social, because we ended up, we were a group of 100 artists that got together to build this thing, to renovate this building and live here and work here. So we had meetings every week, 
and 30 years ago, and this is before email existed or the internet existed, um, and we managed to make decisions, even though that's difficult for a group of artists. Ten artists in a room will have 20 opinions. And um, so we did have to deal with that process. But as a result, we are, we've known each other for a very long time. We've known each other for two years before we actually became neighbors, and uh, which was a very interesting process. And um, now we're neighbors, and we, uh, we love doing things together. And now we're told that we aren't supposed to do things together. Well, we can still do things together, and we can be six feet apart while doing them. We can't do everything six feet apart, but we can do some things six feet apart. And um, I, I posted a friend of mine in the building wanted to have a group of people come to the gallery here and talk, just hang out and drink some wine and talk. And so I posted that for her because I'm sort of the cruise director of this building by just the way that it's turned out. That I tend to be the person that people talk to about doing something as a group. Often they talk to me. And I like that role, I think. I think I would have made a good cruise director on a sinking ship. Oh, don't forget that we've got a shuffleboard competition that we still have to play. The men that remain on deck can do that while the, their lady folk get in the lifeboats. Um, anyway, I suggested that people come here and do, you know, and chat. And, and we had a lot of people, well, not a lot, we had maybe eight people. And these were people that I hadn't seen for a while, some of them, one of them. I hadn't seen for a month, maybe, and it was nice to listen to her stories. And we talked about the coronavirus. Ouch! Hot glue is still hot, Pierre. We talked about the coronavirus for a few minutes. And then we talked about Egyptology. And then we talked about museums and shows. And I. We talked about music a little bit. We talked about we talked about stuff that uh, was uplifting. And it's yes, you can do that one on one on Skype with someone you know. That's fine, maybe. Oh, how's that one? Um, but I think it's more fun when you have more than one person you're talking with. So my thought was. And this is what you can do in your apartment building. Let's say you live in an apartment with 100 other people, 200 other people. And you might know one or two of your neighbors, but you never bothered to know the other ones. You might know their names or what floor they get off on. But you've never talked to them because we're told <laughs> not to talk to strangers. Uh, and now it's going to be too late because we're all going to die or whatever is going to happen to us. Well, it's not too late. You can talk to your neighbors now, today, before it's too late. And you can do something like this. Here's an idea for you, all of you. Why don't you put a little sign up on your, on the, your laundry area or whatever, wherever people congregate to do it things all by themselves, and you can say, let's all walk to the grocery store together at noon on Tuesdays. Let's just make Tuesdays our walk to the grocery store day. Or 
whatever it might be that you need to do as a individually, but it doesn't hurt to do it as a group. And you find out how people are coping. Maybe there are some people that you could help. I'm not telling you to get closer than six feet. You can do, do this without sneezing on each other. You can wear your masks and talk at the same time if you wear masks. But why not? Being alone is really, it really sucks when you don't have to be. Yes, you don't have to cough on people. Yes, you want to keep the disease from spreading. You don't want to touch people if you don't have to. But walking together and talking for the 10 minutes it takes me to walk to Target to buy my milk, which I have to do today, I can post on our in-house Facebook page. I'm going to go to Target today at noon. Would anyone like to walk with me? Six feet away from me? And I think that would be fun. How's this one? So I think I think all of us can do these little tiny things to keep from ending up feeling really, really depressed. And again, me walking to the store with you and you're six feet away from me, I don't think that's going to kill us. Unless we're run over by a truck, which is possible. So here's my little, my little creatures, little trucks. These, the ones over here are going to be in the foreground. Not all of these are going to be put on this thing. These are going to be maybe in the middle ground, somewhere in the foreground here. The pickup truck there, the red pickup truck is going to be closer. But these here are going to be way off in the distance. And the distance on my particular construction is going to be sort of this level. Maybe, maybe up here. I'm feeling faint. If I fall over, it isn't the coronavirus, it's my blood pressure. So, here's a little sports car. And this little crane here will be seen. That's a real person singing or a record of a real person singing, but it's kind of nice. So there we go. So I'll be working down here for the next till Wednesday night. And I've got my yellow, and I've got my blue, and I've got my red. And then I have my cardboard that have holes already cut in them. And they're, they're sort of representing structures that are being built. So they're going to be all throughout the piece. These, this is a box full of lettering, things that will turn into 3.1416 for short. Um, these will turn into uh, some letters come in handy, especially zeros or O's for um, wheels on things. Um, these are great for wheels.
that's, oh, I'm making these things. These are, I don't quite know what these are going to do, but I'm just going to set them out just to show you. These are thin pieces of cardboard that I've assembled. They're mainly monochromatic, though some of them have a little bit of black in them. And I thought that these might be used maybe to simplify the background behind some of the constructions that I'm building that have these things. Um, you know, putting something like this on that busier, more textured background may make it harder to see this. So by putting it on something like this, it will be easier. Not so much for this red one, but for the little tiny ones over there. So this end might end up going here um, in this sort of range. Or I may not use them at all. Maybe I don't need to and they'll end up being used for something else. Like this it can be a perfectly lovely hat. What do you think? If I wear this, no one will notice that I'm, my hair is thinning. There you go. Goodbye.